We're at the Peabody Public Library in Columbia City. It is February 21st, 2006. I'm Janet Skank, the director of the library, and we are interviewing Richard M. Hess. Mr. Hess, um, what branch of the service did you... Uh, I was in the Army. Actually, I was in the Army Reserve, and our unit was activated. Okay, and um, what war did you serve during? I served in Vietnam. Served in Vietnam. What was your rank there? E5. And where did you serve? Where? And where? Oh, uh, at Cameron. Cameron in Vietnam? Yes. Okay. Um, did you um, volunteer or were you drafted? Uh, I was in the Army Reserve okay. and I did volunteer for that, but our okay. unit was activated on day. Uh, how did you get into the Army Reserve then? Oh, I, I volunteered for that. You volunteered yes. for that? Yes. Okay, and um, you did that here in Columbia City? In Fort Wayne. In Fort Wayne. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, then you said your unit, your Army Reserve unit was activated? Correct. Was that usual, something usual that they did during the Vietnam? Uh, yes, it became usual. Uh, our unit was, uh, we went to four meetings a month and uh, then they, we were designated to be a selective reserve force which more than doubled our time in the meetings and I knew something was up then. And what uh, year was this? This was in 1968, 1968. When, when we were activated, yes. But uh, after a lot of extra training then our unit was activated and we went to Fort Carson, Colorado. Why did you join the Armored Reserve and not the Army? Uh, actually, I was kind of naive. Uh, my brother and his friend joined, and so I thought, well, I'll join. <laughs> um, in 1968, they, they, they were drafting, weren't they? Were they yes, drafting yes, they were. Um, they hadn't gone to the birthday method, had they yet, about in 68? I think they had. had I'm, they not, I'm not sure. I don't remember for sure, but I think they had. Okay. Um, but it was in 1964 when I signed up for the reserve. But you signed up in 1964. Yes. And um, what kind of training did you get there then? Uh, in, originally, the reserve, originally. Oh yes, yes. Uh, well, I went to basic training at Fort Knox, and uh, then I went to AIT, which was uh, uh, I went to mechanic school at Fort Knox also, and I was in that maybe five months, and then came back and started going to meetings. Your basic was it? The, it was it the same as the uh, regular army? Would oh yes, say? yes. There were regular army people. How in long? The how long did that take? Uh, it took eight weeks. It took eight weeks. Yes. Okay. And what kind of things did you do during basic? Oh, everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing nice. Nothing nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, we uh, we learned how to how to march, which isn't vitally important to me, but uh, we learned a lot of things that would benefit us in combat training. Mm -hmm. And when I was in uh, basic training, you know, and a lot of guys were just taking that ho-hum, and while I was in basic is when the Gulf of Tonkin incident happened. Uh -huh. And uh, I listened to Lyndon Johnson talk about that on the radio, and I thought, hmm. So everybody started paying attention after that. Um, but you learn to shoot rifles and hand-to-hand and -hand combat and peel potatoes and... <laughs> uh, I had a don uh, gas mask, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. the, well, I guess it was very basic then. I mean, those are the kind of things. How yes. about any training beyond that? You said you went to just school right after that? Yes, uh, I went to mechanic school. Mechanic school? Yes, uh, to, to work on trucks and to work vehicles. On trucks and vehicles. Yes. Had you had any experience in that line before that? Um, what well, were I, you doing when, before you joined? Uh, I was a cabinet maker. You were a cabinet maker? Yes. And I still am working for the same company, but uh, I grew up on a farm, and every farm boy is a mechanic, so. so you had a little bit of training, yes. a little bit of aptitude for yes. that. All right, and then you, after that training, you came back to Columbia City? Yes. Columbia but, City. But Columbia Were you City. married at that time, sir? No, I wasn't. You weren't. When did you? Uh, I got married in 1967. 1967. Yes. So that was before you actually went to the Yes, no. yes. And were there not exemptions for that? No, no. no not for being married? I mean, I, when you volunteer, you're, you're in. Okay, I don't care whether you're married or not. <laughs> That's <volunteer>. right. Um, <laughs> how did you receive word? I mean, you came back here. You weren't, you weren't in the Army yet. You're still in the Reserves. Correct. 
How did they let you know that you were going to be going over to Vietnam or being called up? Or uh, Well, like I said before, the, the Selective Reserve Force, and I knew something was up with that. And then they made an announcement on the radio, on the news, that they were going to activate 25,000 reservists. And I thought, I don't stand a chance. And I, Was that 25,000 from Indiana? No, no. No, nationwide. That was nationwide. Uh, but I heard that news when my wife was in the hospital giving birth to our first child. Oh. And I thought, oh golly, I can't tell her that. And it was about a month later, I guess, is when we were informed were. that we were ones that were going. So we, we packed up everything at the reserve center and uh, loaded it on trains and then we flew to Colorado. So. So your reserve, your unit stayed together then? Yes, we stayed together and we did some more training in Colorado. We were there for, uh, oh gosh, about six or seven months and then they started uh, levying us, which they pulled us out individually and assigned us to units in Vietnam. Okay. So. And were you told then how long you would have to st uh, serve? Well, we were activated for a two year time period. and. Uh, it was in May of 68, so we assumed it would be in May of 70 when we would get out. Okay. But they did uh, decrease that time. We actually got out in, uh, around December 1st of 69. Uh, what did you know about Vietnam during that time? I mean, uh, Before I went? Yeah. Um, well, everybody watched the news and, and watched the body count figures. and, and uh, did you know anybody had, or had already gone to Vietnam? Yes, yes. Yes, I, I knew two people from Columbia City that were uh, killed in Vietnam. Before you actually left? Yes. Um, you went to Colorado and they started levying you out, is that the word? Uh, yes, used? after we did some training, they called it uh, basic unit training. You know, we, what is that? Uh, Actually, it was more of the same. It was about the same thing we did in the reserve, but uh, we did things as a unit, and some personnel, like uh, dispatchers and things, went to additional schooling there. But uh, were you still a mechanic at this time? No, I was actually a truck driver. Okay. Yes, and I was an acting sergeant at that point, so I had a squad under me. Um, but when you're acting, that's only in the unit that, that you're in. So when I went to Vietnam, I was a, a specialist fifth class. Um, the training, yeah, we went out into the field and spent nights out there. And How'd you get to Vietnam? I mean, mode of transportation. Oh, they flew us. They flew you, know, you there? I, I would rather go on by slow boat. But they... <laughs> did did um, you go right to Vietnam or did, were you um, taken somewhere else first? Uh, well, we were home on leave, or I was, and uh, then I flew from uh, Fort Wayne to San Diego. And uh, there was, they processed us there, and then we went from, on an airplane and flew to uh, Anchorage, Alaska, and then to Vietnam from there. Straight into Vietnam, and where were you land? Mom, did you land? Uh, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Da Nang. Da Nang? Yes. What was your impression when you first got there? Well, that's an interesting story. My very first impression was the plane stopped, and they shut it off, so the air conditioning was off. I thought, I don't want to get off this plane, and then it started getting hotter, and I thought, gosh, it's got to be cooler outside. Let us off of here. And so then finally they did, they opened the door, and the closer I got to the door, it was so hot. I could not believe it. Uh, what, what, time, what time of the year was this, by the way? Uh, this was in uh, April. In April. Mm -hmm. So it was hot in April. Yes. It was hot all year. Really? In yes. Vietnam it's hot all year? Yes. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we got off and, and your clothes for the first month, your clothes are just drenched, you know, until your body acclimates to it. But it, it's the hottest thing I'd ever been in. Your body actually acclimates. I mean, it'd be, yes, it will. Person, will it? I have a funny story about that. Okay. There, was, um, there was a storm in the South China Sea. Cameron is, it's Cameron Bay, actually, and it's right on the ocean. And uh, it had really cooled down. It really felt great. You know, I, it was probably 75 or 80 degrees. And we had uh, local Vietnamese that worked in the motor pool with us and clean parts and some of them trained. And, and uh, there was a couple of boys that I really enjoyed. And they were sitting there shivering. And so I was making fun of them. And um, 
they knew a little English and I knew a little Vietnamese and the French had been there so you know you said things like buku and, um, and sign language and so they got out of me how cold it was or that message across to how cold it was where I came from and I thought how am I going to tell them this you know and that they'll comprehend and finally I took them into the office there and there was a refrigerator and I opened the door and opened the freezer part which was covered with frost and I said same same and this boy's eyes just got big and huge and utter disbelief and then he says oh bullshit <laughs> Uh, so and it was it was hard for me to believe that that came from a place that cold. Um, you stayed then. You were still a truck driver. During, Actually, you, I was a mechanic. Went back to be a mechanic uh, yes. when you went, went there. Yes. And you basically stay on the on the was it a base that you were at? Or yes, like, yes. Uh, Cameron was a big depot area. A lot of the ships came in and unloaded there, and then uh, the motor pool that I was involved with, the, the truck drivers would go out and and move that stuff around in the depot area, but. Uh, no one in our unit left at that uh, Okay, so for the basically Bay Area. the two years you were right, yes. or the time you Very, spent there, yes. where you were right there on, yes. uh, on, yeah. uh, on the... Yes, and uh, probably the safest place in Vietnam. Really? Yes. Why would that be? Yeah, well, it was, it was a Bay Area, and we were down on a peninsula, and so there was no way across. They could shoot rockets across, and uh, there was a hospital there, and they did come in and attack that one night. They did... Uh, blow up a uh, jet fuel line that went from the bay up to the Air Force Base, but and there wasn't a lot of activity. Okay. Uh, well, for two years, did you stay there two years? No, no, I was there for, actually I was only there for about eight months. About eight and, months? And then they let the reserves out, so. All the reserves left? Yes, yes. All of the reserves came home at the same time. Really? Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's river? not like it is now, you know, where they keep pulling yeah. out replacements. Yeah. Uh, did, did any of the reserve ever have to go back? No, just no, I'm not that I know of. That you know of your right. unit. Um, what kind of besides fixing fixing the vehicles? Um, what other kind of things did you do there? Either either for you know like maybe entertainment. What kind of food did you eat? What was it like? Uh, yes, the uh, entertainment. We had a, actually had a uh, movie screen in our company, and they would show movies every night, and and some of them were good movies. Every night. Every night. Uh, yeah, we worked, we went to the motor pool six in the morning, got off at six at night, and there wasn't anything to do, you know, so you got cleaned up and ate, and it'd be dark, and you go out and watch a movie. Did you work weekends too? Uh, we worked six and a half days a week, 12 hours a day. Uh, but the half a day off, and those were staggered by, you know, all the individuals, uh -huh. and uh, there was a, a beach. It's called the Navy Beach, which was on the south end of the, the peninsula, and we would go down there and swim, and and uh, it was neat. But how, how many men do you estimate were there at that time? Not in all of Vietnam, just where you were at. Oh, where I was at, that was a big area. Oh gosh, I don't know, maybe twenty thousand. Twenty thousand, just that little yeah, area. Yeah. Yeah. You said they had hospital there. Yes, there was, there was a hospital. hospital. Yeah. Okay. Hospital okay. and Air Force Base. Uh -huh. You said you got to know some of the locals? Yes. Basically the ones you, you worked with or did you get out into the country? Uh, no, I didn't really get out into the country, but the ones, there were a lot of them that came to the motor pool and worked. And, and I really enjoyed the Vietnamese people. Did you get to know about their families and things like uh, that? Did you talk about some, that? Somewhat. It was hard to talk with them, but you know, you, you got to know them kind of on a personal uh -huh. basis, but not a lot about their families. Did you ever get to taste any of the local food? No, I didn't. No, but it had to be better than some of the things we ate. Really? Tell me about that. <laughs> well, the, the food for the most part was pretty good, but I had been there a couple of weeks and I was eating a piece of bread, which they baked there. And I looked in and it had bugs in it, real small bugs. And I thought, ew. And a guy next to me was eating and I says, hey, that bread's got bugs in it. And he'd been there a while and he says, I know. And he continued eating it. And I looked around and everybody else was too. So apparently it was a common thing, so I ate it too. <laughs> um, do, do, do some of the men that you actually serve with, uh, do they have any interesting stories or... Tell me some of the things that happened while you were on, on, on the base. Um, there was a riot in the company next door, racial. 
Rachel Rodney yes. in, in, in the company yes. of the of the man. Yes, it was. Yeah, you know, it was kind of frightening, and uh, they had, we, we had guard duty around each each company had guard duty around their company, and uh, they had it really the blacks had congregated, and there was a, a disproportionate amount of blacks in that company, and I don't know why, but. Um, Anyway, they had they beat one of our guards, put him in the hospital, and so then they went on a riot and they were ransacking everything. and And uh, in three days' time, they went through three different company commanders because they beat him up. And uh, were the company commanders black or white? No, I think they were white. Were they white? Yeah. But uh, anyway, one night we our, our company commander got a bunch of soldiers out on between our company and theirs because they were threatening to come over and burn our barracks down. And uh, they went over and lit one of their barracks on fire. And the company commander put his rifle in the air and yelled fire. And thankfully, our guys shot th their guns in the air, but it, it calmed things down for the meantime. But uh, finally, the MPs came in and uh, arrested a bunch of them. And, but took they several of the MPs, jail. I can't imagine where the yeah. army yeah, would I tolerate know. something yeah. like that. And uh, I know Jim Linker, a friend of mine, and I was on guard duty one evening, standing between our company and theirs, and the MPs were walking around in their company. And they came over and talked to us. And I said, do you guys have ammunition in those rifles? He said, no, we don't need it. And I said, the only thing that's saving you walking through there is because we shot it in the air, and, and they think you've got ammunition too. But uh, that was one thing I noticed when I was in Vietnam is the disproportionate number of blacks. It seemed that if you were rich, you had a way of staying out of Vietnam. And if you were poor, which most blacks were. Were the blacks, were they regular army or were they part of the reserve unit? Uh, they were regular, regular army, army for the most part. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and I had, I had a lot of friends that were black. Okay. I, you know. But it was just kind of an unfortunate situation. Yes. Um, do you ever have any of the big names come and entertain you? Like the U.S. Outdoors? Oh, yeah, there was... Uh, oh, gosh, who was... It seems like it was Miss America, but I can't believe that was who it was. There was ten, ten gals, and they were really pretty, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Hope ever show up? No, I didn't, I didn't see Bob Hope. Guys. No. It's interesting. Um, you were married at this time then? Yes. Right? So I wouldn't yes, ask you about dating anybody over there. No, no. How did you keep in touch with your wife? You seems you just had a small child too. Yeah, and that's another story. Uh, the day I left for Vietnam, we went to San Diego and I thought, this is the last chance I'm going to get to talk to my wife on the phone. And so I called her that evening and she said, guess what? And our daughter was just over a year old and she hadn't walked. She was standing up at a coffee table or something. but. She said, Michelle just walked out around here to me. And I said, you're kidding. And, and I still have trouble with that. I lost it. Yeah. Um, but she would have been, if you said you were there eight months, but she was a year and eight months then or so? Yes. When she finally got yes. back? Yes, yes. And she didn't recognize you. She did not recognize no. you. No, no. no. That was hard, too. But did, did the other way of communicating them when you were there? Oh um, yeah, we we wrote. I wrote a letter every day, and then uh, had a tape recorder that I would tape a messages tape and and send to her. And if the postal service didn't X-ray it, well, she got to listen to it, and she did the same thing for me. And uh, there was one time uh, that Jim Linker and I went out to. Uh, it was out of the Air Force Base, and you could make a phone call, and they would get a hold of a ham. Uh, operator and you would say I love you honey over you know and then they'd have to switch and uh, but it was nice to hear her voice um, you said that you st you basically stayed on the base there but um, were there any kind of like casualties or anything like that? You said they attacked once. Uh, no, not that I saw. Not, not that, that I saw. saw. Well, the, I know the there were like a hundred casualties at the hospital when they 
they came in and attacked that, but I'm not sure that anyone well, how, was How big the base was this then? It was pretty good size. Was it? Yes. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of barracks. Okay. Um, was, was it like a, I don't know whether a staging area would be the right word for it, but people would come in there and, and from there go out into the countryside? Um, mostly what left there were trucks hauling trucks. Uh, equipment, and, equipment and, and, and supplies. Yes. Okay. Um, well, some service people do things for good luck. Did you ever consider doing something like that? No. No? It wasn't no. One, of, one of yours? No. Did you get any kind of leave while you were there? No. No? For the eight months you were, you were there? Okay. Um, the men that you served with, and the women that, you know, during Vietnam, I imagine there were women, or at least nurses there on base. Yeah, I didn't see any nurses, see. but there were uh, donut dollies. What's the came donut to the dolly? Oh, the Red Cross girls. The Red Cross girls. Yes, yeah, so we, we knew them as donut dollies. And they so would come and serve Kool-Aid and play games for a half hour. And uh, uh -huh. it was well, kind of a break. <laughs> the, well, the people that you were serving with then, um, did, you, did you form any kind of lasting friendships with any of them? Uh, I haven't been in touch with any of them for a while, but uh, yes, uh, there was a couple of guys from Indiana. Uh, one was from Evansville and the other one uh, was uh, from over around Rensselaer. Uh, but I haven't talked to him for a while. And there were a couple of guys uh, from my unit in Colorado that went over at the same time I did and were in the same company. So, And I do see those occasions. Um, when you um, came back then, after the eight months, uh, did you take advantage of any the benefits, or were those benefits even available to you? Yes, they were. I did take some uh, uh, schooling on auto mechanics, uh, a correspondence course that the government paid for. They paid ninety percent of it. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and is that what you did after the war, after your your service then? No, I'm still a cabinet maker. Still a cabinet Same maker. place, forty three years. <laughs> okay. Um, did you um, um, did you join any when you got back? Did you join any of the veterans organizations like the VFW or the American Legion? No. Uh, with the attitude in this country at that time, I guess I just as soon would forget it. Uh, what kind of reception did you get when you came back? None. None at all. None? No. Uh, you know, people would, you know. They knew you came back with, well, I'm glad you're back. That war stinks, you know. And they, you know, they didn't give you any credit for what you did, regardless of how they felt about the war. Mm -hmm. Even in, um, even your friends, the people that you knew. Oh, they were glad to see me back. back. Yes, yes. How about your family? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, definitely. My, uh, yeah, dad, and mom, and my brother, and and sister, and uh, and my wife's family. Uh -huh. you know, you had, a, you had a brother and a sister, did they serve? Uh, my brother was in the Army Reserve. He's he the one that reserve. talked me into joining. <laughs> That's right, you said that. Uh, but he didn't, uh, he never got activated. He was never activated. No. And my sister didn't at There's all. There's got to be some kind of irony in that then. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're in the Army or the Reserve, you always complain when you're in there, you know. And, and he had to go to summer camp and he, he told uh, a uh, friend of his, he says, this year I'm not complaining at all. He says, I could be in a worse situation. So. Uh, that war lasted uh, many years after you were you were able to oh, leave. when did they pull out of there? Was it 75? 74, Somewhere around yeah, there. So, you know, I left in 69. Do you remember that when, that, when that was announced that they were pulling out? Yes, I remember watching the footage on TV and the helicopter trying to take off when it was overloaded and, yeah. And so that, did any of that surprise you or? Not really. I didn't know that the war was winnable at that really? point. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, that war was fought a lot like the American Revolution was fought, you know. Uh, it was a country from a long distance away trying to fight a war, and the local people were terribly outgunned, but they knew the territory, and, and uh, they had advantages of, of being their home area. That's interesting. That's an interesting comparison. Um, 
before we end this, um, was there anything that I either failed to ask or something that you wanted to say? Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm proud that I served my country. Uh, I, uh, there was a lot of that I didn't enjoy, but uh, uh, I volunteered and, and I didn't complain about going, so. Well, Mr. X, we really thank you for uh, participating. You gave us some very good information, and uh, thank you. Thank you.